Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video here at Tailman. Today we're going to continue exploring the Lost Zone engine with this Lost Box deck, if you will, which contains um, the Comfy engine with Mirage Kate and a bunch of different attackers, right? So let's go over them. First off, we have Comfy, not an attacker, but the backbone of the engine. Flower selecting ability allows you to look at the top two cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand and the other in the Lost Zone. This will be used along with Colorless Experiment, which lets you look at the top five. You choose three and put two, the two others into the Lost Zone to activate the Mirage Gate, which allows you to search your deck for up to two basic energy cards of different types and attach them to your Pokemon any way you like, as long as you have seven or more cards in the Lost Zone. Now, that's how we're going to power up some of our attackers. And also, by having extra cards in the Lost Zone, we are able to use Kremrant's Lost Provisions ability, where you have, if you have four or more cards in the Lost Zone, you ignore all energy in this Pokemon's attack's costs. And we also have Sableye with the Lost Mine attack, where you can only use it if you have 10 or more cards in the Lost Zone, and you put 12 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. Now, with the Mirage Gate and the assorted energy types we do have, we're going to be powering up things like Snorlax with the Thumping Snorlax ability, uh, attack, sorry, at doing 180 damage and um, putting itself to sleep. Uh, usually you won't expect Snorlax to really survive, and if it does, you have a bunch of switching guards to get out of it, because um, during Pokemon checkup, you now have to flip two, two coins instead of one, and if either of them is tails, then this Pokemon is still asleep. However, with the Unfazed Fat ability, you get a little bit of extra protection, for your investment into this basic Pokemon, you prevent all effects of attacks from your opponent's Pokemon down to this Pokemon, which is pretty, pretty cool. Now, we also have Raikou V, a lightning type attacker. Of course, against can Spalkia with the lightning rondo attack, doing 20 plus 20 more damage for each bench Pokemon and the ability Fleet Footed granting you an extra card. We also have Ace Q with the block face attack, doing 70 damage, great for mirror matches, great against Reggie Gigas decks. Great against um, a bunch of stuff, as long as you can make Ace Q the only Pokemon you have in play, which with Scoop Up Net, it's not that difficult. As with the block phase attack, you prevent all damage done to its Pokemon by attacks from basic Pokemon. Now, we also finally have Drapion V with the Wild Style ability, where this Pokemon's attacks cost colorless less for each of your opponent's Single Strike, Rapid Strike, and Fusion Strike Pokemon in play. So um, Dynamic Tail will do 190 damage essentially for free against decks like um, Mew Max and even Rapid Strike Urshifu, which are the only um, style decks that we're seeing right now. But it's especially great against Mew Max because you get the free 1 hit KO on it, no problem. Now, we also have Radiant Greninja, not only to discard cards and draw extra cards with Concealed Cards ability, but we, since we do run Water Energy, we can also threaten with Moonlight Shuriken, discarding 2 energy and doing 90 damage to 2 of your opponent's Pokemon. Pretty cool ability right there. So that's why we have the, assort, um, the Assorted Energy types. 12 total, we also have Energy Recovery with Energy Recycler and Training Court and Ordinary Rod as well. They capture energies help with our setup and getting the Confei engine going as much as possible. And then we have a little bit of disruption with a copy of Marnie and Roxanne each, along with a boss's orders to target down our last price. Now this deck once again heavily relies on the turn one battle VIP pass. If you end up whiffing that, things could get tricky. And that is something I'm not liking about the style of decks that we're seeing lately and the builds that are doing well. Relying on battle VIP pass in my eyes is not that great yeah, not ideal um it's more justifiable in decks like palkia where you have for a readout so if you're going second you have the ability to directly search for at least one but oof it's i don't know having a card that's completely useless after turn one in decks that don't really look or cycle through a bunch of cards such as mu Max, i don't know i feel like it's a little too um variance based in my opinion as long along with um as you've seen in my videos i'm not very comfortable with the company engine and how um it ends up working out at least not paired with Giratina. definitely want to give this a try so let's jump into some ladder games after this quick message from our sponsors if you're planning on buying any cards from tcg player make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel it's the best way to do it and it's free Looking for PTGO codes? Photon Store has all the latest sets and promos instantly delivered to your email. You can use Tailman code when checking out for 5% off. 
Card Market is Europe's largest online marketplace for Pokemon cards. Whether you're looking for sealed products or singles, vintage or the latest sets, just follow the link in the description to find what you need. This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website PokemonCard.io. Alright, so off to a decent start. We do have ways to apply pressure here and this is pretty cool. I could actually get a turn one KO thanks to um, the Drapion B. Now, I'm not so sure that's worth it. It's going to be better to use Drapion to um, take three prizes rather than two. So I guess my best play would be to attack with a Gramorant and follow that up with um, Snorlax. That's not a KO though, that's 290 damage, so I'm 20 short. I mean, three, three hit KOing the Mew is fine. Um, because I should always be able to trade effectively. And the Ordinary Rod now just became the most important card in my deck. So that I can access two Drapions. If I can access two Drapions, that should be game over, basically. So we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. That's a fantastic top deck. Definitely going to go ahead and play that. Um, not super concerned about the training court then. I do like these two um yeah i do like these maybe i should have pro uh, prioritized the um the the the, the thing the <laughs> escape rope it might have been a good play here all right so i'm gonna bench the oranguru i'm gonna attach capture energy to that yeah I'll go ahead and establish another Gumfei. I guess I do have six second damage counter drops if necessary. Or Raikou. Attacking with Raikou also doesn't seem like a bad choice at all. Okay, uh, speaking of, not super happy about losing that capture, but that's okay. That's three cards. I uh, can now definitely attack with Cramorant. Mm, all right, I do like the... Uh, I actually don't like the Battle VIP path that much. No, you know what? I think it's better than the Comfy, because then I can thin a little bit more. Yeah, grab like these two. Seems alright. I can't afford to bench that. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. Okay, so now I'm guaranteed to be able to attack with the Cram. I think, given that... <clears throat> I do want to get close to the Mirage Gate, I guess. The main card I want to get close to is another... Uh, another way to find a basic Pokemon, assuming Mew VMAX is going to come up and attack, right? So, yeah. But Quick Ball is basically all I need now. So, I'm going to go ahead and switch card into the Cramorant now. And... Bench the Cramorant, and I'll do this. So that I can guarantee switch in case of a Marty. And there we go. Spit innocently. Very nice. And then later in the game, my win condition can just be Sableye Knockout Meloetta. So this feels like a very easy matchup. Even if I only get to use one Drapion, I should be... Should be able to close this one out fairly easily. To the point where if the Mew doesn't evolve... My play might actually be to just use Cramorant and knock out the Mew. No, I think that's the way to go. Cramorant, knock out Mew. I know I'm getting a scoop of net, but I don't really need it. Five cards. Yeah. I'll just go Cramorant, boss KO the Mew. I think that's worth it. And I'll go ahead and once again save <clears throat> the scoop of net. Double Mirage Gate. Um, benching the Raikou doesn't seem worth it, really. I do like attaching the energy, though. And I have a guaranteed retreat if necessary. And we get two prize cards. Very nice. Very, very nice. We also get a Marnie, which is really good. We get a card to discard for the Quick Ball. So this is fantastic. This feels 
super free super super free right another mew gets benched Cranomatic. Mm. Ail flip. So if they attack me with Meloetta, that's honestly fine. Um, I guess I technically wouldn't have a great way to deal with Meloetta, but my way to deal with it would be to find Snorlax and attack with Snorlax, right? And then just find Draven to finish the game off. But they don't even attach to Meloetta, so that's gonna be that. Okay, I know I'm getting the scoop of net, so I'm gonna go ahead and promote the comfy. I do need more um, things in the lost zone. We'll go ahead and do this, grab the Draven. My opponent will not be happy about that. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna go ahead and flower selecting. Mm -hmm. can definitely keep the switch card, which means an extra card <clears throat> into the lost zone. For me, which is always good, definitely the battle VAP pass. No energies in the lost zone for me to recover. Go ahead and switch card right here. And I mean, so the Mirage Gates <clears throat> at this point, what they're gonna do is they're gonna help me thin, right? Uh, well, if my win condition is the dude the sable eye then maybe not i'll bench this dude okay i'm gonna play one because i do have so much energies that i'm gonna play one yeah then these because they don't help me attack with sable eye and then i can um have guaranteed retreat as well which is fantastic so i'm guaranteed the ko there's a sable eye there's a cold rest there's the energy and there's a switch card so this is basically game over if i do this if they don't knock out the Drapion, Drapion wins me the game. If they um, knock out the Sableye, since I have the Colors Experiment and a bunch of switching cards, then this is basically game over. And I'll do the 60 damage to the Oranguru. I didn't realize the 60 damage wasn't self damage. I thought it was uh, onto the Drapion, but that, that makes the card even better. <laughs> and that should be game. That should absolutely be game. I'm guaranteed of my Marnie, the Call Resist Experiment. I have seven cards, so I get to use Flower Selecting, put the eighth, Call Resist Experiment, put the ninth and tenth, and then Sableye closes out the game against Meloeta. So that's it. That's the game. It's incredible to know how easy the Mew matchup is. It really is incredible to see how easy this was. <clears throat> All right, uh, we do see a switch. Not like that's going to impact anything anyways. Just rebenching a bunch of stuff. And that's going to be it. I could also just end up finding the Orion Eye Rod as well. Which we know is not at the bottom of the deck. Did I shuffle my deck after I Marnied? I don't think I did, right? No, I did not. There's the victory. All right, on to the next match. All right, we're going first. We have Rob LVIP pass, um, capture energy, and a bunch of switching cards. So this is looking really, really nice. Uh, we're up against a Raikou, so that could mean we're up against a mirror match, which could get a little hectic, not gonna lie. Um, and could mean we see Ace Q. Ace Q mirror matches? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and escape rope. Then we will start with the flower selecting. I feel like this Norlax could be good in this matchup. But the energy cycler, recycler. I'm going to go with this Norlax. I'm not super happy about loss zoning that card, but that's what happens with the um with the loss zone engine honestly um the snorlax could end up being huge in taking a knockout on my opponent's raipu all right we'll establish the cram go ahead and retreat and we will go ahead and flower selecting again 
perhaps six again that's two ways to get energies back gone but the snorlax with the six again could actually end up um getting a ko on the raikou next turn if i'm able to find colors experiment and mirage gate and more switching cards or scoop up nets and stuff so we'll see we shall see i reckon this is gonna be a mirror match not a lot of decks are playing right lately. I can start with a fleet footed. Best case scenario, my opponent gets a slow start. I'm able to snipe the right. Yeah, this is a mirror match. Okay, as expected. <clears throat> a Cramorant KO next turn would not be ideal, but switching out the Raikou. We'll see. Yeah, this is a hundred percent a mirror match then. Pretty interesting to hit this. There's the Radiant Greninja. Don't feel like my opponent should be able to use Mirage Gate this turn, right? Possible, but very unlikely. Very, very unlikely. Taking their sweet time to, to figure out price cards, which maybe I should have done myself. Okay, double comfy. If it ends up playing into um oh, maybe I should have promoted the sable eye actually. Comfy gone, there's cram, yep. Yeah, I fully expect to get knocked up here. Should have promoted the Sableye, that's my bad. Although, two Sableye attacks might actually be decent here. Hey, they choose to go for Sableye themselves. Okay, if I don't get to a Colorus experiment here, that's gonna be really awful. Okay. Yep. So they get the KO. Hopefully I can get the return KO. Maybe that two pricer ends up being their demise. We shall see. No mana fee in the list means... No, I do have mana fee, right? I'm actually not sure. Okay. Thinking the energy. I do have mana fee. Which might be important. But what's more important is being able to... Attack this turn. <laughs> well. There's one. Okay. If I go... Escape rope, who do they promote? I don't think I can go with the escape of boots. Okay, so I need... <laughs> well, that sucks. Uh, okay, well, never mind. I can still attack this turn. It's very costly way to attack, but I can still attack. So I have exactly four. So do I go boss's orders? I feel like it might be important to close out the game. Okay. <clears throat> Just became less important. I will be benching the mana fee. All right, you know what? I'm gonna do this. Not super happy about it, but it is what it is. The mana fee really helps me protect against the Greninja though, which is nice. But no Colorus experiment for me is really awful. That really puts me far behind. <clears throat> okay, just gonna go for the flower selecting. Gets rid of a battle VIP pass immediately, which makes sense. <clears throat> Another colorless experiment, and that's where Sableye is now all of a sudden about to become a real threat. Ooh, they got rid of their own mana fee. Could maybe take advantage of that if my hand was better. 
but unfortunately not quite yet. Okay, it might be a 60 card mirror match, honestly. I do feel like I'm very far behind the ace queue. And I am down two bosses orders and the escape rope. Yeah, how do I deal with ace queue? With my own ace queue? If I power up my ace queue, then... Well, actually, Sable, I can KO the ace queue. Never mind. Okay, you can have it comfy. Sable, I can KO ace queue. <clears throat> and I can use my own Radiant Greninja to target down extra Pokemon, so... I guess now Sable, I became the plan. Okay, so we do have answers to the ace queue, which is nice. All right, um, go flower selecting. Sure, let's keep the energy and we'll go ahead and Marnie away. Okay, 35 cards for me in case it comes down to that. Oof, what a horrible follow. Okay, they should have the same stadium. So I think retreating into the Cramorant is the way to go to stop an attack. Sure. <laughs> Zero damage, that's fine. Okay, I need my own ace Q or to activate Sableye. I have five cards, they have seven, so I'm behind. I have a Greninja as well. So I guess they're not contemplating the discarding. That's ten now. Well, that's nine actually. Yeah, I think my start was just like it comes down to they had call res and they got the first KO. I didn't have call res, and that means I'm behind. Snorlax and capture. Okay, I mean, I have a chance to attack with Radiant Greninja next turn. That would be really good. Knocking out Comfy and Sable, I most likely. Okay, <clears throat> so that's going to be the plan. Pretty please. Nope. <laughs> you wish, Pablo. Okay, so I'm going to go switch cards. <clears throat> Come on, quick ball. Oh, I can't even do it with the quick ball. In fact, um... I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's about to be eight. Um, I don't think there's a way, right? Not this turn, at least. Yeah, nope. I believe I need to conserve my coffee. All right. <clears throat> So, you know what? I want to attach and retreat. Being very aggressive here, but I feel like this is what I need to do. Okay, just keep grabbing energy then. Uh, I'll bench the other cram. Rebench you and get back an energy for sure. Oh, it's gonna be dicey. I don't see how I can win, though. Well, no, rather, I do see how I can win, but it's... Oh, it's getting really complicated here. Now I do need my opponent to take an off. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The issue is... I mean, I could attack. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah. I think now they've realized that I was trying to get Sableye activated. They're going to get Sableye activated and they're going to knock out my Sableye or maybe even my Comfey. Yeah, I don't see how I can win now. My opponent did realize that um, ACU is not a picture-perfect plan. 
Lost Army and Scoop is interesting. That means they have another way. But yeah, look at their hands. They have everything they could possibly want. Yep, there's the attachment. Uh, unless they really messed up. Um, they don't have a way to get the copy out of the active, which I really doubt. Yep, there's a switch card. On to the other copy. Now that feels unnecessary. I had boss onto Raikou. No, it's one retreat cost anyways. Scoop up net. That felt like a waste, honestly, in my opinion. One. <laughs> Alright, so what's my plan then? Just use Cramorant, knock out Sableye? Is that it? Actually, it's use Confei, get a card and loss on retreat, attack with Cramorant. That's the plan. Then I'll have 10. I guess I could use Sableye myself here. Only down one cram. Yeah, actually, maybe just using Sableye is better here. So who are they? Oh, but they're gonna... Oh, they don't knock out my Sableye. Okay, they knock out my Benefi. Interesting. All right, uh, I'll put back the mana fee. Hopefully I can find it. Put back the energy. Use Colrises. Um, I like this. I definitely like the Sableye and I like the Snorlax just in case my opponent gets fancy. Uh, with the capture, I can Establish the mana fee again to protect from the Greninja. And I'll reattach, so I'll just spit innocently for the knockouts. Okay. Haven't lost hope yet. Especially if my opponent's holding a lot of energies in their hand. And they're down two Mirage Kids, too. Maybe there's still hope. What an interesting game, though, for sure. This mirror match is really interesting. Oh, well, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Okay, that's the KO on this cram and the mana fee. And I have the cram. I have Snorlax to tank a hit, but I don't have enough attackers to win this game. I certainly don't. Uh the priest turn with Roxanne would have been the ideal. It's right? but obviously I had the Colres and I didn't have the thing. So yeah. That's going to be it, I believe. I take this KO. I mean, I can attack with Snorlax and hope for the best. I can't even attack with Snorlax. Um, because I need another Mirage Gate. Or this Coop of Night. Okay. So let's see if my opponent can pull this off. I'll do this. And then I need a double head flip on the Snorlax too. <laughs> Could never really use Greninja either. That would have been the ideal Pokemon to use right here. Dumping Snore. All right, double head flip. Don't stay asleep. Just one prize card, too. Okay, I'm still asleep. Flower selecting, okay. Maybe? Energy into the lost zone. Ugh, ordinary rod. <clears throat> yeah, the two save lies. And just get back the psychic. Okay, they put them back. So maybe they can't win this turn, but they can definitely win the next. Get back a psychic. And that's it, unless they don't have a way to switch, which they're down two escape ropes, two switch cards, two scoop up nets right here. And they're down one scoop up net. So I still have one scoop up net left and a switch card. Yep, GG. All right, uh, pretty interesting mirror match. Um, obviously, if you attack first, that's huge. Uh, Sableye becomes really, really big. Bench management becomes very, very key. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool deck. You saw it in action from both sides, and I do like the idea behind it. And the new matchup just felt super free. So yeah, 
Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>